Space Navigators. <laughs> like alligators, but with more. Future Navigators, you can hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, so give him a big hand, today's first speaker. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Sillian. I call myself Captain Future. And by that, I am a crew member and the captain of Spaceship Earth. And I'm here to help us all navigate into the future. So I'm give, going to give a short uh, inspirational uh, uh, talk about this. This is entirely new <laughs> content. So I'm going to test it. You're my test subject today, but you're familiar with the testing and prototyping. So we're going to see how this goes. Uh, Hicks and Draconis, I'm going to ask you questions. It is going to be fairly interactive. So anyone here knows what that means or what that represents? If I say, here be dragons. Hicks and Draconis is Latin. Here be dragons, you know what that means? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a reference they used to, to say uh, on old maps uh, uh, that uh, comes from uh, actually the Roman time. When they draw maps and they reach the, the, the borders of where they know what to draw, they said, here be lions, originally. But during the uh, uh, Renaissance and the mid medieval times, they used Hixig Draconis to describe it. That actually, no, no actual map that they actually type it out, but they're actually maps drawn, drawn on this, like this. This is the Manga Carta of Olus Magnus, a Swedish map drawer, who drew a map of uh, the Northern Europe. And it was very common at that time, you can see, they drew all kinds of sea monsters and dragons in the sea, because they didn't know what was out there. And for the, uh, the representation of this, uh, Hixi Draconis, or Here Be Dragons, is that uh, outside our knowledge and boundaries, everything is unknown. And that's what I, we, here together are going into in this hackathon and what we as a future navigators do. We go into an unknown future. I'm, I'm the opposite of like a, a, a trend, uh, trend futurist who like here to predict the, predict the future together with you. I'm the opposite. I'm here to actually create the future like we do in a hackathon. We're not here to, to have, have some uh, crazy people tell us what the future is going to be like on San Francisco or something like that and uh, this and that and technology and apps, but we're here actually to make it happen. Of course, that's what we humans do. Together we make it happen. And for the first time in human history, we have the tool to coordinate to make it happen. The internet, it's a global communication tool. So, so this is us, somewhere. This is a picture of the Milky Way from Earth. We live in this galaxy. We know for, for a fact that we've been at least one supernova, maybe as many as four supernovas, uh, to create the atoms that our body and our Earth are made of today. And this is our planet. This is an updated uh, version of the pale blue dot picture taken by, uh, I don't remember the satellite, but it's taken from uh, the rings of Saturn. And this is Earth. And so apparently you can see the moon if you zoom in really good on this picture. So here, here is where we live. Uh, and of course, we live in Holland, but we also live on the global world. So we have to like step out of that mindset that we live in a city, that we actually live on a planet. And we have to start connecting to people all over the world with the same mindset. And that's, that's what my, one of my prim primary laws, like educate people and help them come into the mindset that actually go out and meet people globally. You're, uh, you are from more countries than Sweden here, so you know what I'm talking about, at least because you have come here and you have a, a fairly global mindset, I guess. So we have come a long way for our human civilization since we discovered, discovered language and technology like fire and tools. Uh, but that also means for every new invention and tool we invent, the complexity level and the knowledge and the skill we need to, need to have to actually produce and replicate and invent new tools goes up. So for, throughout time, we have, uh, have a fairly simple curve of uh, innovation uh, development. When, when a new innovation come out, come out, you don't, people who already live when it came out, they, they didn't have to adopt to it, because they will die off and their, their children will act, be the ones adopting to it. But now we come in to a period of such rapid change of innovation and technology that 
all of us have to adapt to like hundreds of thousands of new inventions during our lifetime. And this is new for humanity. We, we haven't have done, have, have done that before. Maybe a few, but not thousands at least. And we're not prepared. We're not built for this and we don't have the, uh, the knowledge and the know-how to actually help people uh, navigate this world of complexity. Uh, and most of us pretend that we live in a complicated system or a simple system. We can see the leaders of Sweden today they still haven't managed to come up with a leader for Sweden because they live in an old mindset of, of a complicated world where we do things by the book, the best practices, and, and, and the way we have done things before. We have laws and rules and regulations that take decades to change sometimes in mindsets. But we have, all have to go from, away from that. So I brought my phone with me. You all have this phone, right? <laughs> you, have, you have a new version? <laughs> how, how old is this, is this phone? Yeah, 25 years. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't even remember how to use this anymore because <laughs> this is old tech, right? <laughs> but, but, but you all have new phones like, like this, right? How, how long have you had the smartphone? 20 years. When did the iPhone launch? launch? 2006. Yeah, so approximately 10 years we had the smartphone. Have, have, you, have your behavior changed since you started using the smartphone in any way? Yes. Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you become smart. So, and that took 10 years, and this, this is like 25 years. In the next coming five years, like not, not here to predict the future, but what do you think? Are, are we going to see some new kind of toy behavior or something new that we haven't predicted yet? How do we adapt to that? I know you all, you all cool people, so you, <laughs> like me, you're like, yeah, new stuff, <laughs> how fun. <laughs> but uh, most, of, most people today, who, the leaders of Sweden, they're not cool people. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we make more cool people? How do we transform this? So all this is what we call, uh, the fundamental of this is what we call the network society. We, we used to have a top-down hierarchical system for many hundreds of thousands of years how we managed and, and, and uh, ruled our nations and people, our cities. But uh, thanks for co new communication tools like the, the Telegraph and all, all mass media and such during the 19th century, and now we have the internet. We have gone from a, a network model to what we call a totally distributed model of doing collaboration. And nobody has any training or mindset or insight of this, and we see all kinds of positive effects. We, we also see all kinds of negative effect, effects of this, when clusters and uh, circles of people and uh, silos and mindsets are propagated and amplifying across this network in an unpredicted uh, way. Nobody could foresee what, what, what's going to happen when we got this internet. We also have the Earth that is populated by 4% wild, wild life and 96% mammals that are not wildlife. That's us and that's our livestock. There are 56 billion chattels on Earth today. That's many more than our humans. And they, they take up a very large proportion of our landmass, both in their grace, in their actual ground where they stand at, stand and eat, and also all the space we, we need to produce food for these cattle. And that's insane. A hundred years from now, people will think of us insane that used all, almost all of our livable area on Earth to grow food and grow cattle, just to eat cattle. 56 billion cattle on Earth. And how, how, how many humans? Seven. Seven, Seven. yeah. So there, there are many more of that. And there, of course there are horses, goats, sheep, pigs, and chicken and such. And like this small dot here are elephants in mass. <laughs> so, 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 so the picture of like uh, we get from natural do uh, um, documentaries are, are not portraying this picture for us. And we also have an incredible complex society. This is a mapping of uh, why we have obesity in the UK, run by the U UK government. 
and, and th people think like, oh, we just get sugar tax and it, we solve a problem, or, or we just uh, uh, replace it with uh, uh, sweeteners that's not real sugar and we solve the problem. No, because it's an extremely complex uh, uh, scenario why, why we crave sugar, why we eat sugar, and why we get fat from sugar and fat. fat. So this is, uh, and to, to get to know all this, no, no person alive today can like uh, get a sense of what's going on here. So we need a lot, hundreds of thousands of people doing collaboration in networks to actually understand what's going on in the world today and understand ourselves and what's going on uh, in all our cities. So that's, that's what we got. Uh, we must have uh, become, uh, uh, get prepared for surprise because that's, that's the only thing I'm gonna predict today. Tomorrow or the day after, we're going to face a surprise. We have to have a mindset where we're prepared for a surprise. So how do we do that? We the future navigators, we are working like uh, three years. Uh, we are three guys, me, uh, Carl McFall and Bartola Bergström, uh, uh, who has been working on a separate base. And we, this summer, we put our heads together and we came up with our model, of course. <laughs> but uh, what, what, how can you actually have a mindset or a model that maps all the other models that comes together to actually understand what's going on in society, what's going on in, in work, what's going on, on on a hackathon, what's going on in, here in Halmstad and Halland. Uh, so I'm going to go into this model a little bit later. And for me, my part of this has been like just the two, last two years, I've been reading a lot of amazing, amazing books and thinking all of uh, uh, thinking from people all over the world that's come together and ask ourselves questions that we didn't ask three years ago. This is like new thinking in a lot of networks where I go and, and meet people. And we actually see an acceleration in the curiosity and also the, um, the know-how, how to actually fix all our global challenges. And this is my, one of my favorite books called Age of Discovery uh, by Anne Golding and uh, Chris Kutarana. And they, they write, uh, I can really recommend this book. I've re read it three times now this year only. Uh, and it's, I use audiobooks mostly because whenever I do the dishes, uh, go shopping or anything, I put on an audiobook or podcast. How many of you have listened to podcasts or audiobooks? The rest of you, would you consider doing it? Because that's a really good way to accelerate your knowledge of what's going on in the world. Uh, and there are some more. This is a book called Seven Sams, I can recommend. It's about network effects, everything from uh, computers, what's, what's a network effect in a computer network, the internet, but also what's, what's a network effect between humans? How do we collaborate? Uh, and I can really recommend, like, whatever, whatever you're interested, there are different parts in this book that will interest you about the network society. And this is a book that came out this year as well, or last Christmas, it's called Big Mind. And it's about uh, how do we be, build a global network of collaboration that solve our challenges that, that the nation states and the leaders of today are incapable of. We have to do it bottom up and top down. Uh, many of the environmental movements and uh, other um, uh, movements have been top down from, for like 40, 50 years. And they're so frustrated because nothing had happened because they didn't know how to organize on a mass scale. We did, they didn't have a tool, they didn't have the network knowledge how to actually make change in the world. But this book is a really good example of we do it both top down and bottom down, and it's a top down and bottom up. People like us, we are here to create the future, but we also need to collaborate with people that still have like access to infrastructure, money, power, uh, decision-making on all levels in society and in institutions. Uh, do you know Yuval Noah Harari and his book, Sapiens? Anyone read it? That, that was his first book. This is his third book that came out this September. And this is like yeah, a very, very good book. There, there are 21 chapters, and you can read like just one of them. Oh, most of them are available in blog form, or uh, he does a YouTube lecture or something about this. And he presents the 21 lessons that we have for this uh, century. And many of them are connected to the uh, 17 global goals. You know, that, how many people know of the 17 global goals? I will come into that shortly now. So. And this book, 
uh, probably my favorite book. It's called Stealing Fire. Anybody know about this book? Either? Uh, this book is about uh, this cutting, this cutting state um, art of the, the science of flow states. How many have people who know what flow states are? Yeah. So flow states is when you get into your optimal performing best, like when you do a sport that you're really good at, when you sit down and write code, when you, uh, when you go dancing at the club, or uh, anything you like, like you, you perform so good that you forget time and space, and, you, and, and everything just must flows. And they, they, they collected everything we know about flow states today. This is by Stephen Kotler and Dean Wheel, who works for the Slow, flow State Genome Project in uh, California. And this is cutting edge science together with Navy SEALs and a lot of the studies they've done on like psychedelics and psilocybin and such that they banned back in the 60s and 70s. But we, we now have to start doing it again. Like, how do we actually connect our human minds into these flow states? And what happens when we bring people together that are in the flow states? There's something we could call magic today, but we think it's connected maybe on a quantum level between our brains, but because we can know that the SEAL Team 6. When they go into a mission, they do, they do what they call flipping the switch. They, they get a group coherence where they can start communicating without using words. They can't describe it themselves, they call it like magic still, but this, that's, that's what they call flipping the seats, switch. And this is uh, deeply connected to human consciousness and flow state science. And we like, like just in the beginning of this field. Uh, uh, and also pe all people who do, you have seen, maybe some movies of people doing snowboarding or skiing or, or skateboarding, like crazy stunts when they get into flow and do things like, was it possible? Like one year ago, two years ago, they, they do it today and when one person starts doing it, everyone suddenly can do it. And I don't know how we transform this knowledge of actually go, getting into the knowledge, bodily knowledge of doing stunts like was it possible a year ago. And that, that's also connected to flow states. Uh, and this is a sum up of uh, uh, how do we seek meaning in this crazy world. Uh, this is from uh, Alain de Botton and the School of Life project in London. They have a very, they have like hundreds of five minute short videos that describes everything we need to know about ourselves and society, uh, philosophy and love, and uh, much about relationships and human, human endeavors. And they also, he also did a short video last year when he described what, 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 are, what are actually the meaning we're seeking as humans. And of course we have to have, uh, what are our missions? Continue the species. We have to have children to actually live on as humans in some way. Or we, we, maybe you should leave that to robots and AI. That's, that's a different <laughs> meaning. But most of us want to continue the human race. And we have the master of our minds. Like we have to come, become a much more elevated um, race, where we actually take control of our cognitive thinking, of our emotional thinking, and our spiritual and meaning seeking. Yeah. We also have to, like, most of us are uh, fairly <laughs> agreed upon that we have to increase our satisfaction and also re uh, reduce suffering worldwide. Not all regimes and countries today are working on this. I have, like, North Korea and some some countries that are not <laughs> that work, that work in the other direction, but the rest of us are, uh, are agreeing, and agreeing upon this, that we have to uh, decrease suffering and increase satisfaction. And we also have to take control of our environment, everything from our cities to the biosphere we live on, because we need a biosphere to eat, eat food, uh, drink water and breathe air and live. And if, we, and if we fuck the biosphere up, there won't be food and water for us. And, and you will find a very hard time to live out of nothing. I said people, I usually say that people who don't uh, want to may, may take care of the biosphere, they can move to, uh, to the moon for a week and, and come back later when they, when they change their mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, f so for me, it, this is three projects that we have to get done good at. Lifelong learning, we actually have to be become curious about everything and actually start learning new things every day, every week, every month. And not like you do here, but most people are set in their ways. Uh, and that's a big clash in our society. And we also have to get good at the life skills, like human collaboration, empathy, creativity, curiosity, innovation, 
and all those skills that we, we don't actually teach to every human being today. And, and since this is a skill, this is not something you teach when you're five years old and then you know it, because this is a skill and you have to practice on this every day, every week, every month as well. And we also have to find genius and talent all over the globe. We have to find the new Leonardo da Vinci, the new Einsteins, and they're, they're everywhere. And we, we just have to facilitate actually helping people get, get very good at the things they're the very best at. And we do that, and we uh, mesh that together in the global network, and we help people collaborate around their top talent. We, we're gonna get much further as a human civilization we, when we can coordinate all the top talents. Because no one is a genius on their own. We have to have large networks of collaboration. And we can do that in every city and all over the world. I'm, I'm traveling the world now and visiting all of the places that we can do this. How am I doing in time? I forgot to check my time. You have as much time as you need. <laughs> <laughs> From now on to the future. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the skills we have to get very good at, that's called sense making. Sense making is like making sense of what's going on inside my body, uh, in this room, uh, with, uh, what's going on in my network with friends, and also what's going on all over the world. And uh, we know that the, no human being, like I said before, can, can know everything that goes on in a complex system. So we have to be, be very humble about what I actually know. I, I can call myself an expert, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that I'm not an expert in uh, 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 much, but a very, very small, small percentage of what's going on. And that's not enough. Because then I have to collaborate with experts, millions of experts all over the world, uh, in what we call sense making, to actually know what's going on. And for that, the quest is, of course, to seek wisdom. That's something we don't talk about in our society today. How many here people are talking about seeking wisdom on a daily basis? To become old and wise instead of what the most old people we meet today, old and bitter, I think. There are many bitter people, young bitter people as well. And the opposite of getting bitter is seeking wisdom. And we also have to redefine our roles and identities and our, and our work, what we do as people. Uh, I've been playing with this a lot, and I came up with a role and identity of Captain Future. What is a Captain Future? He's a crew member of Spaceship Earth. He, he, he used silliness and the creativity and curiosity to help people uh, find their roles. That's what I do. And we all have to be, you have new roles and identities. We can't just take the old roles of uh, political leader, CEO, uh, marketeer, communicator, and then add 50% extra of sense-making skills and collaboration skills and networking skills on top of that. People will burn out and go crazy. And we have a lot, large problem with the depression and craziness in our society. So we actually have to create new roles and work and identities that actually help manage this for all of us. I, I would say that we need millions of people working in new ways in the network society with new roles and identities. And the sooner we realize this and uh, start hiring people to actually do this work, the better off we're going to be. So that's also something we integrated in our model. Yeah. We call this model uh, Place Innovation for the 21st Century. And for us, it's, it's a mesh of things that we can do here. It, uh, one part is what we call eventification, like this uh, hackathon, it's an event. It's a new type of event, it's an event that we haven't had for very long. And we are evolving these kinds of events, we are inviting people, collaborating worldwide. I've been to a lot of cool events, uh, the distributed hackathons, when a guy, a friend of mine, is down in Brazil, and, uh, and he has a local group there doing a hackathon, and he connects with a video with all people here in the Nordic, and we give insights to what their, their products uh, live in their hackathon, and we give feedback and ideas for them. So we can do this in an entirely new way. And I started an event in um, Oslo called Catapult that just blown up during the last one and a half years. That many people who have been to events all over the world say it's the coolest events in the world, and it's just in our neighboring countries. So I encourage you all to go to Catapult Future Fest in May, the 15th and 16th of May uh, next year. Uh, and you can get in, in on a student, uh, a student pass, or you can get in on a press pass if you have a podcast or a blog or anything. So it's not, you don't have to buy a way in, but uh, we can fix that up. But I recommend everyone to visit this if you're interested in hackathons and new ways to create the future through entrepreneurship and impact, in, impact investing and everything. So. 
And we also have to facilitate what we call jollification in and around the jolly that I mentioned before. And we also have to take all the good talents and examples in our society and see what, what is best with this hackathon. How can we amplify and make the next event better? And what can we learn from people all over the world doing hackathons to make our event and their event? How can we help them to amplify their best? And how do we, how do we connect this all through digital platforms, through unification, for human networks of social capital and such? So, yeah, so if you're interested, you can talk to me afterwards uh, for this model, because we're working with Trondheim right now, and, we, and we're gonna do the 7th and 8th of January, uh, we're gonna do uh, a hackathon here in Halmstad as well, if that all goes well, together with maybe Health and Technique Center. Uh, maybe a 24-hour hackathon or a two-hour hackathon, we don't know yet, but that's gonna be in collaboration with the hackathon we're doing in Trondheim at that moment. So if you're interested, in that and that's going to be about place innovation. Uh, how do you in, uh, how do you uh, define and innovate a place like Halmstad, Holland, and all the thing you, in things you do? You have to bring yourself and project your your ta talents and knowledge and know-how into that uh, mindset. And for my part, if you're also interested, I, uh, there is a model called Ikigai that uh, comes from the Japanese uh, word, ikigai, that means finding your purpose and passion and meaning in life. Uh, and that model that circulated on the net last year, I think it's, it's for the old industrial economy, so I created a new model that I've been prototyping that I call ikigai 4.0. I won't go into detail of that, but if you're interested how to facilitate and map your, your own journey in this, this is a tool, uh, I haven't found any good tool, there's a, course on Stanford that's called Designing Your Life, that applies design thinking, but I think it's too structural and too little narration. You like to have, uh, you have sheets when you map everything and put numbers of everything you do. I can't do that with myself. I think, find that incredibly boring and putting numbers of everything I do. So I created another model that when you can like just map yourself and see what, where am I today? Where can I go? What do I know? Who do I know? Uh, what do I find, what do I love to do, what, what do I want to get better at, where can I train and find knowledge and uh, mentors and inspiration around this, this uh, my own journey. And how do I connect that to a great meaning and solving like global challenges together. So if you're interested, um, I'm here in Halmstad, so I, I'm going to prototype this model more, so I will do some free prototyping workshops in this model if you're interested as well. So. And I talked about impact. What does impact mean? Impact is like when you apply, apply uh, entrepreneurial and know-how knowledge uh, to solve the SDGs by connecting cities and citizens all over the world, like uh, together. So we're making impact here today. If you don't, don't know the world, it's very hard to really define and people don't use it here in Sweden, but uh, we have to start using it more, I think, because it's a good world to describe what we do. Uh, and here's an example of some in, uh, uh, impact hubs all over the world. San Francisco, of course, I've been there sometimes. Uh, there's a large event called SOCAP every year in October that, um, that we go to, that connects people all over the world who are interested in social innovation, societal innovation, impact innovation, envir environmental innovation. It's, it's just a big event. You don't have to actually pay to go there because there's a big networking area. Uh, hundreds of small satellite events, but this is a great arena to meet people or change makers from all over the world. So I can really recommend going there. But the, we also have the catapult back I talked about before. Join me for a trip to Oslo in, in May when Oslo is at its best, I think. <laughs> uh, because if we stay for Sutunamai, we also have to can experience the national holiday like it's crazy uh, if you want to party. And there's also all other places. Um, uh, Bertola, my uh, companion, has been to India, in Mumbai, and we have some network in Pakistan as well, and we have networks in Japan and Singapore and Africa, uh, where, we, where we see what's going on in different hubs around impact ecosystems. And the SDGs, of course. This is the 17 SDGs that UA came up with uh, uh, three years ago, I think, in this number. Uh, and that, and that's, uh, uh, this is what a roadmap for what every country has committed to solve in 12 years. And we haven't even got started yet. 
So this, this is going to, the pace of actually working and solving these challenges and this roadmap uh, have to pick up. And every city, every organization have to get in on this in some way. So uh, that, that's the conversation we can have here in Hamstad. And I'm uh, meeting next week, there, uh, there's a guy called Anthony Upward coming from Toronto University, where we're going to talk about this next Wednesday. So if you're interested, talk to me afterwards and see if you can do your own engineer or something, if you're interested, how we actually do this with entrepreneurship more. Uh, I'm not going to go into this. So my question to you, we, we use two favorite quotes. One is, the future is all over here, it's just unevenly distributed. And that's like what I said about before. The future is all over here, we don't have to predict it. We actually can just take control of it and help create it. Uh, so that's what we do together. And another quote for mine that we use uh, is uh, the old quote from David Bowie from the 70s uh, that says, uh, the future belongs to those who can hear it coming. And, by, and by, by, by that, we mean, and I think what he meant is, that people who are curi curious and can listen to each other are the ones who are gonna um, get serendipitous about opportunities going into the future. So that's what we're gonna do together. And this is a, also a great inspirational uh, guy for me, uh, the Push Minister Fuller. He wrote, wrote a book called The Operating Man for Spaceship Earth, <laughs> 40, 50 years ago. And that's also where he says we, we have to make, take responsibility to become crew members of Spaceship Earth. And uh, the, I literally took that challenge to heart when I became Captain Future. And this is uh, not, well, his most famous quote. You never change things by fighting existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So if you're tired of old people and old institutions not getting the, the apps, the services, the mindset we need, we just we, we stop asking permission, we start building it anyway, and then we connect with someone who can, like, an enabler that has some kind of influence or power or money that can help us launch, and we just build and deploy, and we propagate it and amplify it through our networks, and we, then we make the old system yeah, obsolete. This is our home. And we're gonna go face the dragons and draw new maps of our reality. Everyone here has a dragon to slay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and questions, questions or insights, or talk to me afterwards if you don't, if you want something. <laughs> questions! Yeah. Yeah, I also brought, brought a prop. I said, I started my company uh, one year ago. And some events give badges, and this is just some of the events I've been to the last few years. So I, I go to a lot of events. <laughs> so, and that's how you meet people who want to change the world, like this. This is an event, but uh, we have badges, you have? I have to have a badge. Of course you get badges. <laughs> so, so, and there, I've done this without money. You can, you can ha literally hack yourself into an event. You can come press, student, you can talk to me or someone. Who, who knows the organizer and get in for free. So you don't have to actually spend thousands of <laughs> kronos or dollars to get into an event. I hacked my, almost all of them, I've hacked myself into for free. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We have some gifts from our sponsors. <laughs> First, uh, High Five thinks that we need a surprise and something. Surprise! Yeah, we're gonna have, get ready for surprise. And uh, Shin Up. I'm just kidding, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> Shin Up said that yeah. you probably have enough energy, but you get more candy here. Candy, yeah. yeah. And then for, for, the, for the complex map of obesity, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then some good stuff from the university. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you really want to look into the future, you can borrow my future guide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it's back to hacking. The next thing happening on the schedule is food. At one o'clock, you will have lunch. And then we continue hack until half past two, where Jörgen Öjeval from Almst University will talk about how to create uh, an environment that is, that is uh, creative for your mind.